Earnings week continues. We're going to take a look at a number of companies that are reporting on Wednesday. Before the bell, we got Bristol Myers Squibb, Shopify, uh, Waste Management, Sherwin Williams, and Hilton. And after the bell, we're going to take a look in at Meta, Qualcomm, Etsy, ServiceNow, and Ford. Uh, let's get right into it here. Bristol Myers Squibb has been a leadership name all year. Um, so far, year to date, this name is up roughly around 20%. You can see this big breakout over the 70 level. And if I back this chart up here, the all-time high that we had back in 2016 is trading up right here at this 77 zone. So we've got that uh, six or seven year breakout that happened in at the 70 zone. And then the all-time high breakouts right there in at 77. Hasn't been able to hold over that major long-term level back up in here. The levels that we're really going to be watching in on this earnings is definitely for that 70 zone to hold and above 77 is where really good things can happen in on this chart um, next we're going to take a look in at Shopify now Shopify has given back everything right it's trading back down at the levels that it was at back in 2020 and 2019 so the depth of the pandemic low is right here in this $30 level and that's what it's been holding on to here over the last couple of months so Last earnings was trading up around 50, sold off pretty sharply, but it held that major level. That's going to be the key in on this chart on the downside for this earnings as well. And you'll notice it is not traded up really on a closing basis above that 40 zone right here. So we have this range. This is a nice base of about three months at this point in time. We're looking for that break over that 40 level to get that follow through here to the upside. 30 is going to be that downside break. If it stays inside this zone, then it's still inside what we like to call the chop box here as it's been for the last quarter. But this is a solid three month long base and we're definitely looking for a break one way or the other. So those are the key levels to watch there. Waste management. Holding on to that 140 zone, you get the the upper end of this right around that 170 zone. It's really been in this range uh, since about March, February, March of last year. And the middle of this range is right essentially where we're going into this earnings, right around that 156 level. And you can see, you know, again, when I draw this line, we get about equidistance to the top of this range as we do to the bottom of this range. This is kind of the no man's land up or down really doesn't matter unless you break a kind of above that 168 zone or below that 140 zone most likely this is going to stick inside this range we're looking for a resolution one way or the other so watch that 140 on the downside watch that 170 in on the upside next up we got sherwin williams sherwin williams has come down and held its major level and again we can go back and look at these charts from 2000 and and 20 and 21 right we've got this key level in around 220 that is what is held on this pullback so far this year um, but we again have no higher highs so again we have some a series of lower highs and lower lows still in on this chart right so we're still in that very clear downtrend but we're holding those major long-term lows under 220 is where bad things can happen if we get up over that 280 this high zone in here and really about 285 taking this high out that's where the good things can happen and on this chart so we're sitting at about 260 going into those earnings look for a 285 or above 220 below anything in between it's still trapped inside that range it's been in over the last couple of months and the last thing that we're taking a look at before the bell would be hilton this is important to pay attention to not just necessarily from a chart standpoint but because we really want to see what the travel industry has to say here uh, they had had a really strong run after 2020 and 2021 where everybody was getting out of the house and, and getting ready to go and travel because they were tired of being cooped up. Really want to see what the forward guidance is, is in on this because we broke underneath of that key 130 level, which kind of held as that support from last August. So really a year's long worth of support we fell down from last time. 110 is kind of that major level now. So we're kind of trapped in between these zones and a follow through here to the downside would be really bad. A break back above 130 can be pretty good for this chart. This is kind of that, you know, purgatory zone where we don't really have a clear direction. We're holding on to a major level of support or we're sitting under at least a major level of resistance. So we got to see who the winner of this is. And it's going to be very interesting to get their take um, on the economy and travel just in general. After the bell, we've got Meta, formerly known as Facebook. And we've got this major multi-year level, right? This goes back to 2016 in here. This 130 to kind of 150 zone 
has acted as that area that has held the support ever since 2016's breakout there, right? Um, we tested it and we made that nice strong bounce up and now I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you guys can see this better. Um, it got really hit a uh, day or so ago off of Snap's horrendous earnings. Um, the market kind of is concerned that they're going to have a similar uh, you know, type guidance and things to say. We have a series of lower lows and lower highs that we have just put in since that big gap down there at the end of January. What happens here is really, really important, right? You lose kind of that 155 zone. You're losing the bottom end of a multi-year important range where the bottom end of that range is around 130. If it holds above that, there's still a ton of work, again, to be done in on the upside, right? We keep talking about, we have so many charts that look like this. We just have lower highs. We need to start making higher highs. And to do that on Facebook's chart, we need to get back up over that 200 zone. Above 200, we have a higher high, right? There's still a ton of damage on the chart even above that, but that would be the first constructive sign. So we're watching 200 in on the upside. And we're watching that 155 in on the downside. Qualcomm is a very interesting chart here. All right, um, back this up so we can get a good view. We held that 120 zone. 120 zone is the key in on Qualcomm right here. All right, that was the low from all of last year. We came all the way down and we tested it and we made a super strong bounce. This is one of the better looking bounces in tech names on all of these charts that we've taken a look at. The thing is, is where do we bounce up to? This zone right here is really important. We can see it from back in 2020. We can see it from 2021 on the resistance side. We can see it in on the support side. We can see it in as kind of where that failure happened. This 155 to 160 zone is really, really important. You take that out, this chart really starts looking pretty good compared to the majority of the names in the tech space. But a failure right here, right, off of earnings, if we don't get any push higher, all we've done is we've came down and we've tested support and then we've run into resistance and failed, right? So this is going to be a big test for Qualcomm here. A move over 160 is really, really constructive. Uh, a rejection at the 160 zone is not. Um, and on the downside, 120 is that major, major level of support that they must hold. Next up, we'll take a look in at Etsy. Etsy held on to its 2020 breakout spot, right? We have a lot of charts that look like this where we had just incredible runs for years and given the whole thing back, right? It gave the entire thing back, but it held that 70 zone. That is what is held. That's that breakout from 2020. It was resistance in 2019. It's a major, major multi-year level, and we have held it so far. But like most of the other names that we've taken a look at, series of lower highs still in play. So this chart is still broken, right? There's a lot of work that needs to be done. The big level in on the upside is really about that 110 zone, okay? If you look at that, we have all this price action from 2020, right? We had that first test in 2022 where we got the initial bounce to 160 off of, then we failed, and, and so this 110 level is huge. We're testing resistance from the underside. What happens here is really, really important. Support 70, resistance 110. That's a really big range when you talk about things on a percentage basis. But with the volatility that we have seen, um, you know, we have tons of charts that look like this. 110, 70 is what we're watching there. Next up, we'll take a look in at ServiceNow. Uh, another chart where we have a major level that is holding you know, from the last year or so. So here's the 2021 lows. This zone has held. Right, this is a big major zone. Right, we see a lot of charts like this. This is a potential head and shoulders topping pattern if we lose that support zone. We have a lot of charts where the support is multi year support that has to hold, or these charts really start looking like they're breaking. On the upside, we need to take this 500 and some change level out. Well, we have a quarter worth of trading inside this range, we have no winner at the moment. Move over 500 gives the bulls credence. A move under 400 gives the bears a really strong looking chart. And so we're watching this very closely to see if we can get a break in either direction. Last up, we'll take a look in at Ford. Now, Ford holding that major $11 level right here. All right, this is that breakout from the end of 2020. 
The next major breakout level goes all the way back to 2013 and 2014, and that's that 18 zone. Ford made that real strong push at the end of 2021, had a really strong move, opened this year up, and has done nothing but fall. And it has sliced through this level of support. It sliced through this and this and, and, and so on and so forth. The level that held is that 10 to $11 range. That is what has to continue to hold. Because you fall back below that, and look what happens. We find ourselves back towards that long-term downtrend that is in play, right? And this has been a you know a decade-long downtrend that has been in play in Ford. We got that breakout here, and we started to go, right, after 2020. This is a major, major level. On the upside, the first higher high would be 14. Then we'd really need to see 16 and a half. Another really damaged chart with a ton of overhead resistance. As that's the theme, as we have taken a look at all these charts for yesterday's earnings, today's earnings, and, and we'll see more of that when we look at Thursday's earnings as well, we have a ton of charts that are sitting on major, 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 major multi-year levels that have to hold while still having a ton of overhead to supply to deal with. This is a tough market. We know it's been a, a brutal market so far this year, and we're seeing that in a lot of these names. But... We're at that point where we can start to get some constructive action. If this earnings season goes well for a lot of these companies, they're able to hold on to those lows and they can start making those incremental higher highs that really turns the tide and the way in which things look. But they have to prove it to us first. We'll be back once again tomorrow with Thursday's earnings. Hope you guys have yourself a fantastic day. And tomorrow's video will also have to talk about that FOMC meeting on Wednesday that's coming up as well.